And I feel privileged because I grew up <clears throat> admiring two cricketers. Um, one was my first cousin, Javed Barki. And Javed Barki and Mansoor Ali Khan played together at Oxford. Then, of course, I had this advantage, like him, going to Oxford. You could play first-class cricket, quality cricket, and then get a, a, a quality degree. And so it was such an advantage, and I can, I, when I look back and I keep telling my boys, that it is such an advantage to be able to do both. Because both um, complement each other if you, can, if you can do it. Education, the greatest thing education does, it, it structures your mind. Successful people, the advantage of, the, the reason why people are successful is because, not because how they handle success, how they handle failure. In failure, you should have the ability to be able to analyze your mistakes better than others. You should be your best critic. That power of analysis is sharpened by quality education. I got close on a number of occasions. It wasn't until 2005, 2006 that I got to meet Tiger again in New Delhi during a test series um, being held in, in Delhi at the time. And we had a wonderful evening and I had the opportunity to spend quite a bit of time talking with Tiger about cricket, particularly Indian cricket. Tiger and I talked that night about Indian cricket and where we thought it should be, where it was and where we thought it should be and where we thought it could be. In fact, we talked about unleashing the blue tiger. The areas on which we agreed, and, and Tiger was very supportive with what I was trying to, to do with Indian cricket at the time, and we talked about the, the fact that to be successful, excellence, in fact, is never an accident. It's a choice, or it's choice and not a chance, that determines your destiny. When I was sitting down and watching a video up there and hearing Avik Babu speak, he said he was courageous enough to get Greg Chappell to, back to Calcutta last year. And, but I must say, sir, you've done the right thing by bringing me this year to correct that. <laughs> and I must tell you that all those who are, who've watched cricket, who've been a diehard supporter of the game and still watch cricket, getting respected by the players, the people, and the game, and people connected with the game in England in those days was never easy. It's never easy now. It was never easy then as well. So he didn't have an eye. He didn't have a cricket bat. And to average 35 in Test cricket, he must have been special. Now I know today is an evening to talk about the life of a captain. But why I'm trying to say all this is because, as a common man, we all see the glamour and the glitter of a cricketer, whether it's a Pataudi or a Tendulkar or a Ganguly or a Dhoni. But behind that glamour and glitter, the steelness, the hardships and the toughness is, is the thing which separates the great from the ordinary. And here is one man who with so many handicaps have achieved greatness and most importantly respect among the Indian players. The best was not Tiger Patodi when he wrote to me. He said, don't quit, wait for a few days, then decide. <laughs> so I said, okay, I waited for 15 years. <laughs> yes, Tiger Patodi did ask me about the fast bowler, but somebody from Calcutta Media asked my mom, why couldn't we produce another couple there? <laughs> and my mom, you know, 75 years old, then she said, Kapil's father died. <laughs> but certain people have the talent, God-gifted talent, and I think Tiger Patodi had everything. I was very, very unlucky, could not play with him or couldn't see him playing. You can well imagine if you have one eye and go to the toilet, you will bang your head ten times. And this man was genius, no doubt about that. I wouldn't talk more than that because I'm very emotional towards him. I think the most important is the captaincy. 
and you have to see what is what i understand it's very important how you think clarity is important and tiger must be very clear in his head what he want to do and the captain only succeed what he's thinking and what he's saying is the same thing honored to be asked and indeed to be back in calcutta to be following such a distinguished line of speakers and to be speaking at the patodi lecture but as i say i want to talk about sport in general cricket focusing uh, on um particularly on the topic of being on form or what is sometimes more uh, currently called being in the zone a higher place a secret aspiration a letting go a rapture this is being in the zone and occasionally at every level that one plays a game at or does other things at i think one reaches moments or senses of that experiences of being in the zone can also unlike being in form be momentary i remember taking a catch in a county match for middlesex against essex at south end i think it was in 1980 i was fielding at slip and somebody went for a hook and the ball ballooned up over the wicketkeeper's head uh and uh, towards the sight screen running back at full tilt to get to where the ball would drop for the difficult chance i was aware of being utterly confident that i would take it in the event i dived full length and caught the ball inches from the ground just briefly i had that exalted sense of acting with total conviction in exactly the right way of everything being in place but this is the patodi lecture and i wanted to say a few things about the noob the image that comes back to the mind's eye aquiline still slight swift hawkish as we saw from some of those clips um on the field he had presence a regal touch one's eye would be drawn to him tiger was indeed something special a proper arrogance or as bishop betty whom we also heard there put it an imperious charm he was after all a prince he once convinced a team member that the victoria memorial here in calcutta was another of his personal palaces <laughs> in a way tiger was the dennis compton of indian cricket the first cricketing superstar in india whose appeal involved so heady a mix of brilliance charm and charisma to top off the fairy story he married shamila tagore someone who in india's celluloid pantheon seems to me to have been a combination if i may say so of the great shakespearean actress peggy ashcroft and marilyn monroe with a bit of the opera diva joan sutherland and the prima ballerina margot fontaine thrown in for good measure and indeed i played against him at wisbrook greens and i have to say that our combined tally of runs in that match was 2 and i outscored patodi thank you very much for your attention i have always maintained tiger patodi was 50 years ahead of his time but those were different days different times you know we used to socialize i learned a lot from tiger about socializing with the opposition once the game is over then you interact with the opposition have a drink together have fun now we have a monster staring at us i was reading day before yesterday a uh, story of three or four young kids from rags to riches media carried but nobody knows the the story of rags to from riches to rags kitne bache hain because of ipl now i will i'm not 
Hate to change your mind. I'm not. It's my very personal opinion. How can you possibly get more money playing for a wretched club than playing for the country? I have, I'd be the last person to complain about players making money. Because we, we fought. We fought with the, our board officials. Daisor Bike match? Test match? One test match, India beat New Zealand in four days. The board deducted 50 rupees. <laughs> Nobody stood up to that nonsense. I think to Tiger Patodi's memory, we'll do well, all of us sitting here, whether you are from the hotel industry or from the Bengal club or from the Telegraph. It's a, I think it's a moral obligation that we should stand up for the betterment of Indian sports people. And not just cricketers, all Indian sports people.